Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we will talk about the coronary circulation. The capillary density in the human heart has more than 3000 mm squared and the skeletal muscle has only 400 mm squared. The epicardial, intramuscular and subendocardial coronary vasculature. Anastomosis in the coronary arterial system. Collateral vessels among branches of the arterial vessels and throughout the venous system act as anastomosis. They provide alternative routes for blood flow, which should a primary vessel be occluded. Collateral vessels originate from existing branches that undergo remodeling with the proliferation of endothelial and smooth muscle cells. This is called arteriogenesis. Angiogenesis, which is the formation of capillary-like vessels connecting the existing coronary arteries, genesis of subendocardial collaterals. Factors involved in angiogenesis are fibroblast growth factors, vascular endothelial growth factors, hepatocyte growth factor 1 and hypoxia inducible factor 1 and lastly is the angiopoietin 1 factor. Coronary flow 5% of the resting cardiac output which is 225 milliliter per minute although heart rate weight represents 0.5% of the body weight. Coronary flow depends on perfusion pressure, which is the aortic pressure. It also depends on resistance of the coronary vasculature given by blood viscosity and the inertia of the blood column, which is 10 to 15%, auto-regulated changes of the vascular diameter, which is 60 to 70%, and extrinsic compression during myocardial contraction which is 25 to 35%. Extravascular compression impairs coronary blood flow during systole. Approximately 80% of the total left coronary blood occurs during diastole in the early systole, blood flow may even reverse transiently. A high heart rate, which has a short diastole, can be dangerous when coronary artery obstruction restricts blood flow. In the right coronary artery, the systole contributes substantially to the total flow. Coronary blood flow in depth of the ventricular wall. Systole. The endocardium is less perfused than the epicardium due to a higher intramuscular pressure near the endocardium. Diastole. The endocardium has a low intrinsic vascular resistance, having a better perfusion during diastole, compensating the effect of systole. But any condition that compromises coronary blood flow usually causes damage, first to the subendocardial regions. Measuring coronary blood flow can be by quantitative methods, accurately but invasive, and are limited clinical use. Example A is the electromagnetic magnetic flow metry, and example B which is the ultrasound flow metry. Semi-quantitative methods which show the distribution of the myocardial perfusion are non-invasive, therefore they are widely used in clinics. Myocardial scintigraphy determines the distribution of radioactive isotopes with access only in perfused areas using scintillation cameras.
The positron emission tomography, which is the PET, based on the detection of gamma rays emitted by positron emitting radionuclide tracer which is introduced into the body on a biologically active molecule. For a myocardial perfusion assessment are used M13, RB82 and O15. So this was everything for today, thank you very much and hope to see you soon again in the next video.